Glory to God. And as you're seated, if you have your Bible with you, open it up to Psalm 122. The 122nd Psalm should be pretty well right in the middle of your Bible. Now, last Sunday, last Sunday night, we had a very special meeting here at the church, and we announced our plans to start a second campus of Word of Life Church. Hallelujah. Second, a second church out of Word of Life Church in Platteville, Wisconsin, by the end of this year. Hallelujah. We're going to Wisconsin. Now, and we also introduced our campus pastors for the Platteville campus of Word of Life Church. We introduced campus pastors, Mike and Amanda Lopez. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why don't you stand up? This is Amanda. Mike is, you know, Mike, he's back there in the back. Praise the Lord. Now, we are, now let me just say this, that Mike and Amanda is throughout the end of the year and on forward. Mike's role here at the church will be changing, and he'll be splitting his time between Dubuque and Platteville. He is going to remain our, uh, Mike and Amanda, remaining our campus, our uh, United Student Ministries, our youth pastors. So, so, yeah, somebody's glad about that. And so uh, don't be concerned at all that you're losing your youth pastor. Uh, so he'll be up there uh, several days a week taking care of the flock up there. The other portion, he'll be here at the church. We're one church. Let me explain it to you this way, that we'll be, we're one church with many locations. I'm going to be the senior pastor of the whole church. The whole church. I'll be senior pastor here, senior pastor up there. Everything that people are experiencing here, they're going to experience there. Glory to God. We have, we have live worship here. We're going to have live worship up there. Okay, we have uh, live people greeting at the door. <laughs> we'll have live people up there. Uh, up there, there probably will be cheese. But we have live children's ministry here. We'll live, have live children's ministry up there. As we have live ministry here, we're going to have live ministry up there. When it comes to the message, what's preached from this platform will be shown by video up there. That'll be the difference. So someone asked us, are we going to lose Pastor Mike's pulpit ministry? Is, he, is Pastor Mike going to still get to preach here some? How many of you love Pastor Mike's pulpit ministry? And yeah, and so yes, he'll still be preaching here some. Most of the time, uh, what's, he'll be up there taking care of that, of that church. And so, uh, one church, say it with me, one church, many locations, because that's just the first campus after this one. So, we've already been asked and have been for years, and you need to understand, need to understand this church, that uh, this is not something that's new. This idea is not something that's new. When I first became uh, on staff here at the church, one of my first responsibilities was a weekly Bible study in Platteville. We already had a presence in Platteville, and the previous pastor was already talking about starting churches around, around the area, and God has for years been speaking of this church as a hub with spokes, and we'll be showing a little video a little bit later on that just recently uh, God has spoken again using that terminology. And so nobody be anxious. God is on the move. Now, in Psalm 122, verse 1, we read this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. He, in other words, to church. He was, this guy is glad about his church. Anybody here glad about your church? Yeah, glad about Word of Life Church. Now, why are we glad about the church? Well, for one thing, salvations. Jesus is in the house. Oh, glory to God. First of all, how many of you in the room are glad to be born again? Glad to be children of God? It, yeah, isn't that wonderful? Why don't you just lift both hands and tell Jesus, thank you for saving, him, saving you right now. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you for saving us. Now, in this house, let me ask you this. How many of you have come to Christ in this church. Go ahead and raise your hand up. A lot of you. Go ahead, wave it around. Let us, let us see them. Go repeat to God. Isn't that awesome? Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Salvations are something. He, again, he said, I was glad 
when they said, I was glad when they said unto me. And I want us to maintain that gladness about, let me ask you again. How many are glad to be part of Word of Life Church? Glad to be in church today. Glory to God. We've had people that have been a part of this church. One family moved to Texas. Another family moved to, to Missouri. And after years of looking for a church, have said things like it just they were not in a church. They said, we just can't find another Word of Life. Now, I know there's, a, there's good churches all over the place. I mean, there's good churches meeting all over town and all over the tri-state area today. But I know when God makes you a part of your church, it's, it's different, isn't it? It's just, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Go to our church. So let's talk a minute about the blessings of being a part of our church. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to have an opportunity to come to know him. Because knowing him is the most important part. Knowing him, really knowing him personally and and developing a, a real genuine relationship. He likes you. He likes you. And the more you know that, the freer you'll be. The more settled you'll be in your life. And, it, and free to go forward with his plan. Because he's created a wonderful life for you. And that's the most important thing is to get to know him. Oh, glory to God. And the... When we, but, and so if you don't know him yet, if you've never received me, you can do that this morning. At the same time this morning, I'm kind of talking to our church family here. Because I'm talking with you about where God's taking us. So you can see that picture. So you can catch God's picture, that vision. And so you can understand the why behind it. You know, why are we planning a church? It's important that you understand why. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. But let's just talk for a minute for a few minutes, about the blessings of being a part of the church. Let's just name a few of them. Uh, matter of fact, let's do it this way. Everybody take about five seconds. One, two. Think about, think about a blessing. I'm going to ask you just to shout out a blessing of being a part of Word of Life Church. All right? Nobody forced to do anything, but some, something you're glad about being part of the church. And, and just think about this. You may be shy. I don't know if I want to say a thing. Listen, this is going to build up everybody in the room. All right, who would stand up and just shout out a blessing of being part of the church? Go ahead, just stand up. Susie? Family. Family. Grace? Healing. Healing. Amy? My pastor. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sam? Fellowship. Fellowship. John? Love. Love. Thank you for standing up and doing it. Somebody else? Glory to God. Thank you for being one guy holding up the male end of things, John and Sam. Glory to God. Let's... Let's talk about a few. Are we glad about those things? Yeah, we sure are. And God's, how about God's presence? You know, God's very presence. And his, 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 I was thinking about this earlier. There's the lifting, freeing power that manifests when we praise. Anybody found that to be true? The deliverance power, when we start to praise God together and, and magnify him, all of a sudden something lifts off of us. Woo, hallelujah. Just like that guy said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to church. Man, some, sometimes says, I made it. You know, it's like, yeah, hallelujah, what a victory. You know, that, and so that freeing, lifting power that manifests as we praise, and then also that empowerment to decide, that to, to consecrate, to offer ourselves, to change, that happens as we worship. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That, you know, as we praise, man, it's just that, that, that lifting, liberating power manifests. And as we worship God, when he finds it, yeah, I, we find ourselves empowered to yield, empowered to give ourselves. Can I get an amen? amen. Glory to God. How, and, and then there's a, the entertaining, life-changing messages. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you know, I kind of say in that tongue-in-cheek, but you know, we really do try to make the messages engaging. And, and, and we say this, say the, the I can put that to work on Monday morning message, that aspect of it. You know, I actually heard somebody say this one day. They, uh, they said, it's not, church is not supposed to be fun. 
And they were serious. I guess they, and I can understand that. Church is not a carnal amusement in that sense of fun. It's, it's not that kind of fun, and yet it should be entertaining. We believe church should be pleasant to come to. And the message should be practical and, and real life, right down where we're living. Can we get an amen? And, and, and talk about the blessings of church, the blessings of being a part of this church, the friends, the family, the comrades, the companions. You know, the, as I came into the service, in the first service, I walked by the top life room, and I saw five boys, five little boys in there. I'm telling you, it's just about more cute than you could handle. I thought, man, look at those guys. Talk about the blessing of church. You know, these guys are going to grow up together. You know, and, and you teens, you know, I, I know that everybody's got friends and you've got different worlds. You've got your school world and stuff like that. But there's just some, a lot of times out there in school, we're swimming upstream. We're walking just totally contrary to the values and the behaviors and the attitudes, you know, the activities of, of the people all around us. And in the midst of all that, we've got, I got my church friends. I got my church buddies. You know, just like those, those five boys got the privilege of growing up and, and only God knows what those five are going to do. But it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be boy. <laughs> You know, and the little girls are so, so darling. But I remember from growing up in church and, and watching some of the guys around here. You know, we had boys at that time growing up. And I remember at our home at a certain time, a certain season of our life, you come in the front door and there'd be everybody's tennis shoes lined up. And we looked at, okay, Greg's here. <laughs> you know, this one's here, this one's here, Jamie's over. You know, and it's just... Growing up together. They're just, that's a blessing of church. Can I get an amen? That's a blessing of being part of the body, part of the local church. And, and then, you know, it's, it's sisters who, who, Christian sisters who will cook with you, laugh with you, cry with you. Christian brothers who will bop you on the head and have some sweet banter with you and back you up. Can I get an amen? amen? Talking about the blessings of church, and then there's that real deepening, and I'm not just, just talking about Sunday morning. This was we do life together in our groups, in our fellowships, in our activities, in your relationships that you develop outside of these walls and formal settings. In the context of that, there's that deepening of our walk with Jesus and walk with each other, that growth, that genuine growth in grace, that transformation that happens. And then it, there's, there's those R words, there's that refuel, refill, recharge. You know, kind of like that guy saying, I was glad when they said unto me. I mean, some days we come in, man, I just, man, I needed that. I'm ready to go now. You know, some days it's just, it's a relief is rest. Like the guy said, Pastor, I'm so sorry I fell, I fell asleep. He didn't know he ought to be glad that I didn't see him. <laughs> I, have, I have over the years called a couple people out on that just fun. It was kind of fun one day out in the old sanctuary. To I knew he was sleeping. Stood right in front of him like Amy here. Stood right in front of him and said, Isn't that right, Amy? <laughs> Jerked to attention right away. We all laugh about that. Other times I think, man, I know what's going on in your life. It's fine with me as long as you don't snore too loud. Just lay right on over and rest in God's presence. That's church. I'm not saying I'm trying to put you to sleep. But I'm saying that part of church, along with the recharging and the refueling and the refilling, there's a rest, there's a refreshing there's a relief. And there's another R word. There's a reaching out to others. Where we're, we're happy about what we've got, what we're experiencing. We want to share it. 
We want to open a door for others to have that same privilege to taste and see that the Lord's good. Are you with me this morning, church? And then there's pickleball. <laughs> and cornhole. You know, and, and softball and nine square. And the hanging out. It's all those things in church. Simply put, we're better together. Now, in Matthew chapter 9, there's the account where Jesus is ministering to a great multitude. In Luke, we're going to look at verse 35 and 36 out of the Living Bible. It reads this, Jesus tra traveled through, around through all the cities and villages of that area, teaching in the Jewish synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And wherever he went, he healed people of all sorts of illness. Verse 37, I'm going to skip over there, says that when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. You know, any of you like me in this, you can get so focused on what you're doing. The people around you are going through stuff. But you're so focused on what you're doing. I mean, we got our list that we're going to check. We got to get this thing done because then comes this thing. We got, we just have, we got stuff going on. We get so focused though on what we're doing. We can get, we can get so focused on what we're doing and what's going on in our lives that we are really oblivious to what's going on in the lives of the people around us. But when we stop, when we take a break and we lift, we, we look we really start to see what people are going through. And when we see what they're really, when we really see what they're going through, something rises up on the inside and we're moved to do something to help them. We feel compassion for them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's what happened with Jesus himself. He said when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them and told them to pray that the one in charge of the harvest would bring laborers into the harvest. In other words, bring people in to help these people. Why? Look at verse 36. It says it this way. And what pity he felt for the crowds that came because their problems were so great and they didn't know what to do or where to go for help. They were like sheep without a shepherd. Their problems were so great that they didn't know what to do or where, where to go to help. Go, where to go for help. Listen, folks, they needed a church. Isn't that right? They needed a church. Can anybody in here identify with what, what this says about that? That their problems, anybody here, ever, anybody here ever felt like your problems were so great and you didn't know what to do or where to go for help? Anybody in here ever felt like that? And anybody ever found help at the church? And when I say church, I'm not just talking about Pastor Lauren, because this is, not this is not about me. This is a we thing. A church is a group of people, by definition. A church is a group of people called out, it's ecclesia, called out, called together for a purpose. So a church is not just the person speaking from the platform are leading from the top role. A church is the whole body. A church is a group. And that's what these people needed. They needed a church. They needed a church. What a contrast to Acts chapter 4, verse 23, where in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John had been moving in the miraculous power of God, and there was a man who had not walked, who was lay, laying lame, at the gate of the temple, and they came in, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, extended a hand to him, and he rose up and walked. Glory to God through the power of God, the Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus. And it so rocked the religious leader's boat that they had him arrested. They, they took him into custody, and they, command, they, they asked him, how did you do this thing? And they said, it's not us. 
by, by our, our own power or holiness, but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom you do, crucified, whom you delivered, whom God raised up in the name among, that's the only name, the only name given from heaven among men whereby people can be saved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's received this wholeness in the presence of all of you. And they said, don't preach in that name anymore. And they said, fat chance. That's my paraphrase. They said, we're going to obey God rather than men. And they were let go. They were released from incarceration. And in Acts 4.23, now this is in contrast to these people in Matthew 9 who didn't know what to do. Their problems were so great. They did not know what to do. And they did not know where to go for help. This group in Acts 4.23 says, and when they were let go, they went to their own company. Ooh, it's good to have a company. Amen? A, a, a group of companions, friends, a church. And they bonded together in prayer and lifted their voice to God for even greater grace and power to manifest. And the place was, the prayers were so powerful, the whole place shook. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And great grace, great ability from God. Great peace and beauty came upon the whole bunch. Man, they just went from glory to glory to glory. I'm telling you, it's great to have a church. It's great to have a church. See, what I'm talking to you about is finding, I'm trying to present to you the picture of God's picture. God's picture. I'm wanting you to help I want to help you find yourself in God's picture of his will for our future. Just like I found myself in that, in that picture of our class reunion. I want you to find yourself in God's picture of his will for our future. See, it's a we thing. Say it with me, we are better together. Do you believe that, church? Yeah. And in this room, yes, you believe that? Yes. And in this room, we have five generations. I don't know, maybe six. <laughs> oh, glory to God, congratulations. Wow. And we're better together. Us more experienced ones, man, we need the vitality and the energy and the gambler attitude of the young. And you young folk, you need our wisdom. You know, none of us need a stinky attitude from any of us or know it all. Can I get an amen on that? But we all need each other. And when, when I talk about God's picture of His will, for our future, it's all of us. It's all of us. Let's, let's talk about staying united. In Philippians chapter 2, we read this in verse 1. The Apostle Paul writes, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Classic Translation. So by whatever appeal there is to you in our mutual dwelling in Christ... By whatever strengthening and consoling and encouraging our relationship in him affords. By whatever persuasive incentive there is in love. By whatever participation in the Holy Spirit we share. And by whatever depth of affection and compassionate sympathy. Man, he gets right there. Is there reality to these things? Okay, together. Come on, church. Help me out here. Is there comfort that comes from Christ's love? Is there encouragement that comes from being together? Okay, strengthening. Is there fellowship? Sure there is. Hallelujah. I would not know how to play euchre if it hadn't been for the church. Yeah. And, I would not have, uh, and I would not know how to play euchre right or wrong, depending on your attitude, if it weren't for Jim Parker, Jim McLean, and Greg Parker in this church. 
Hey, you play with euchre with those guys, it'll change your life. <laughs> the serious, I, I, I would not have known when my dad passed away in two and a half hours south of here, we had his visitation. His wake, you would call, so many people would call it here. And we had that, and I was standing in line in my, the church of my childhood. And couples from this church who had made the two and a half hour drive there walked in the back door. I would never have known that comfort and that depth of consolation and brotherly love if I had not been a part of this church. See, it's all of us. I so appreciate what Joel Lopez says so many times when people ask about going to those settings. And she says, it's what we do. Thank you, Joel. I wish we'd all catch that. It's what we do. Because you don't, it's like my, when my brother-in-law's brother died in, in a car accident when I was a teenager, and my dad asked if, we were going to, if I was going to the house. I said, Dad, I don't know what to say. And Dad said to me, sometimes you don't have to say anything. I'm telling you, just being there. Can anybody get, anybody know what I'm talking about? Say, well, I didn't know him very well. Why would I go? Let me tell you why you would go. It's what we do. It's compassion beyond understanding and it's ministry beyond words. It's being love. It's being Jesus with skin on. It's communicating that you care. And it's Christ taking you from glory to glory at the same time. Can I get an amen, church? Let's talk about being in unity. Psalm 133 says it this way. Behold how great, how good, and how pleasant it is when brethren, brothers and sisters, dwell together in unity when they're one. Verse 3 says it, and verse 2 and 3 goes on to say, it's like like the anointing oil that came upon the high priest and ran down off his beard and, and covered and dripped off the hem of his garment. It's like the dew upon the beautiful mountains of God. Verse 3 says it this way. It's like, it says, there the Lord commands the blessing. Where? In that place of unity. That place of being one. E pluribus unum. Out of many, one. God brought us all together. I like it in other translations. It says it this way. How good and how pleasant it is when the when when the brothers, when the people dwell together in harmony. Well, which is it? Unity or harmony? Yes. <laughs> That's the answer to that question. You know, we talk about praise and worship and how wonderful it is. And I don't know how musical you were. I sing some and have sung some. I played musical instrument. And, and, I, but, and I don't know about you, but I think all of us can tell. It, well, let me preface this with this. You know, un, is it unity or harmony? Well, listen. Harmony is unity. Unity is not sameness. It's oneness. Being united does not mean that we're all doing the same thing or singing the same note. But it does mean, though, that uh, we are on the, singing the same song and in the same key. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, you might not be able to tell what, what, what chord progression or what key the musicians are playing or singing in, but how many of you can tell when someone is playing the wrong notes you know, or, or in the wrong key? Anybody of you ever been in a place where, where the musician, the singer came in and they're singing the song in a different key than the musicians are playing it? You see? <laughs> You know, I've watched as guitarists, they kind of play this chord, that chord, this chord, that chord. Well, they're mining for the treasure. They're, they're looking for the mother load of harmony. <laughs> and when they hit that right place, man, doesn't stuff become beautiful? See, I'm talking to you about the importance of our staying in unity. In unity. 
in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, or verse 8, it says to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about seeking whom he may devour, like a roaring lion. Now, a few years ago, a couple years ago, Joy and I were in, were in Kenya, and we had the privilege of watching the lions hunt for breakfast. We were on a morning game drive, and we saw the, the female lions, they're the hunters, unless they get something huge like a, a water buffalo, then they have to call on the male. But the females are the hunters, and they spread out around the zebra herd, and they look for a straggler. And they'll run that straggler. One will take off, one lion will take off, and the lion can keep up with a zebra uh, for a while, but the lion will wear out quicker. But just when the lion is beginning to lose its pace, they come to the place where another lion is positioned. They're out there. They're waiting. And that next lion will run that zebra uh, until the lion can't go anymore. And, but by right then, there's another one to pick up the chase. And they will together run that zebra to death and then take it. But that morning, the lions got no breakfast. Because the zebras saw them coming. And the zebras all stayed together as they moved. The whole herd moved together. And there was no zebra, no zebra breakfast. The lions fasted that morning. They didn't break their fast. Now listen, that's, that's a picture for us as a church. Be sober, be vigilant, watch out that the devil... Like a lion wants to eat you for breakfast, Zebra. He wants, who's he looking for? He's looking for the one that says, well, oh, that church planning stuff. That, yeah, they can go do, no, I'm, I, I got my own thing going on. You know, I got my own opinion. That's, that's, that's not, I, I, I got my own vision. You know, I'm doing my own thing. I'm not really, that's not for me. Yeah, I'm a part of the church. I'm a member of the church, but that's not really for me. Listen, the herd's moving. The herd's moving. And the blessing of the Lord is on us as we maintain our unity. And so watch out, zebra. Well, I thought we were sheep. Well, come on, give me a break. <laughs> you try this. You, you really think this is easy up here? Talking with you on Sunday morning? Come on. <laughs> First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.10 Paul says this, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. I like, uh, let me just, let me say this before, before I get to this point, let me just, it just comes to mind about a movie from a few years ago, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And have you ever seen that? That movie, well, there's one, there's one line in that movie I thought was so cool. It just struck me. I think that one scene, the Lord has used that one scene to bring points home to me for years. There's that one scene where the girl that's going to get married, her, sister, her mother and her aunt are walking down the street. And the one, I think it's the aunt, says to the others, she, she, she wants them to, to give her advice, but she doesn't want them to dominate. She says this, she says, Tell me, don't tell me what to do, but tell me what to do. In other words, don't, don't try to take over my life. Don't take my choice away. Don't dominate me. But give me some counsel. Help me out here. Give me some, shine some light on my path for me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, don't tell me what to do, but tell me what to do. <laughs> so this morning, you know, as I, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do, in the sense of being domineering, but I am going to tell you what to do, leading you as your pastor. And that's this. Speak the same thing. Okay, how many of you here are happy about your church? Hallelujah. How many of you understand that when you take a step forward with the Lord, the devil just to say, oh, look at them. They've got boldness. They're stepping forward. I guess I'm done. Bye. 
No, you're going in to take new territory, folks, and there's going to be things in your families. There's going to be things in your finances. There's going to be attacks in your mind. You're going to have dreams you never had before. You just, just, there's going to be pressures and thoughts about each other. Come on now. The, what is that? It's devilish attacks trying to divide you. Trying to get you separated. Trying to get you at odds with one another. Trying to say, well, I don't think we ought to do this. Or, I don't, why don't they do it that way? Why? You know, anytime you hear, why don't they, you can tell that you're no longer counting yourself as a part of the group. You've let strife get in. You've let divisions get in that, that cause problems. Divisions to, that form. You know, you're making a group because of an opposing uh, opinion or belief. You're dividing off. You're, you're, for a lack of agreement, you're destroying the harmony. You're not saying the same thing. And when I say, say the same thing, I'm not saying saying exactly the right words or exactly what the pastor's verbiage is. I'm saying that you're not expressing that you're glad with your church and you're one with your church and, and its people. You're not, and you're not one with God's picture of his future, of his will for our future. And so I want to encourage you to church, flock, just close the door. The Bible says whatever you bind is bound, whatever you loose is loosed. If you won't be a gossipy bunch, you won't be a gossipy bunch. If you won't be a fractional, divisive, groupy, clicky, you know, bunch, you won't be a divisive, groupy, clicky bunch. If you won't be devoured by the enemy, you won't be devoured by the enemy. Hallelujah. If you'll stay united with God's, in God's picture, if you find yourselves in, in God's picture of his will for your life and, and take your place together. Let's say one more time. We're better together. Do you really believe that? Yes? Let's say it like we mean it. We're better together. All together. We're better together. We're better together enjoying his blessings and his fellowship. And we're better together. Together reaching out to Potville. We're better together. Now, why plant churches? Hallelujah. You guys are about to see a miracle. We're about to finish this message, about an hour-long message in about two minutes. <laughs> so we got two more weeks. But why, why plant a church and why plant in Platteville? Well, first of all, because God said. All right, because God said. But let me give some reasons behind it. Number one, planting a church is the most effective form of evangelism. 150 people on average come to Christ with every church that's planted. Secondly, look at the condition of our nation. Church planting has not kept up with population growth. And the Bible says that the church, that churches are the pillar and support of the truth. It, and it, so if people are not receiving Christ, they're not being brought to Christ, they're not making disciples, then righteousness decreases in the nation. And the Bible says in Isaiah 32 that the work of righteousness is peace. And the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. So the lowering of morality, the political incivility, the mess, the condition of our country today is a consequence of not planting churches. And besides that, God made everything. He created everything to produce after its own kind. Horses produce horses. Cats produce cats. People produce people. Hallelujah. And churches? Start churches. Why Platteville? Because God said 
You have to understand that Platteville's been on God's radar for this church for decades, decades. And besides that, we're already there. We're already in Wisconsin. You have to understand, people drive somewhere between 45 to 60 minutes from every direction to come to this church, to be a part of this church. So we've already got people. Part of us already is in Wisconsin. And just to be to minister them more fully, more frequently, they can come to church more fairly by being closer. Man, we're going to Platteville. Hallelujah. Just out of curiosity, how many of you in the room are from Wisconsin? Can I see your hand? Why don't you stand up? Let's all have our cheddar heads stand up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's going to be a word of life church closer to you. Glory be to God. Now, don't get anxious. Don't get burdened. God's going to bring it all together. But I want you to take your place. Everybody can give. Everybody can pray. The Bible says that when we pray, we make tremendous of power available, dynamic in its working. Everybody can give. Everybody can give something toward it. And God will give seed to the sower. Let me just say it this way. If 130 people gave $84 a month for the next year, that's $19.25 a week. If 130 people gave an extra, above your tithe and offering, an extra $19.25 a week, we'd fund the whole thing. We'd fund the whole thing. Maybe you could do that. Uh, when we do our Difference Makers Christmas, uh, Christmas offering, we'll be presenting some of the one-time things, like the sound and tech system. Man, we want it to be excellent. And it'd be about $25,000. Somebody could give that whole twenty-five. dollars and, and do that whole thing. Or somebody could outfit the whole kids ministry area for $10,000. Somebody could do that. But we'll all do it to our part. Can I get an amen? And all can go. Now, not everybody's going to Platteville. <laughs> it's still gonna, but some will go to Platteville. Some right here. Because there will be changes. And people can go into different areas of responsibility in different ministries, up into leadership or into opportunities that are coming available. For instance, Pastor Mike, he's been in charge of maintenance. He's not going to be there anymore. So that means that every one of you need to start bringing your own toilet plunger starting next week. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. But it does mean that like Sunday night when we announced that, we had eight people Volunteer to get involved in the maintenance area. Maybe you could help three or four hours or two hours or one hour a week. Help them with the stage design. Are you glad for the platform? You know, how many know it doesn't clean itself? You know, or baptism. You can get involved in baptism and lead that area. Or children's ministry. How many are glad for the children's ministry across the way? Glory to God. You know, those, those, that room with more cute than you could handle? Man, you can see yourself in there. You could make a difference in somebody's life for the rest of their life. You could do some ministry this month that would bear fruit for 80 years. That's a pretty good investment, folks. Pouring out your love, the love of your heart that God put in you. In children that, you know, at that age, they probably won't remember your name, but Jesus will. Hallelujah. All can pray, all can give, all can go. Hallelujah. Now, let's wrap this up. I know there's going to be adjustments. Because it's not going to be the same. People are not going to be here. Okay, there's, there's people that will go to Platteville. And so... Next week, we're going to teach you how to access God's grace to make those adjustments, to make those changes. But here's what I'm telling you today to do. Why don't you stand up with me, would you please? How many of you are happy about your church? Hallelujah. 
Well, why don't you smile at the Lord real big and tell him one more time, I'm happy about the church. Go ahead and thank him for, for his church. Hallelujah. Go over to God. If you're not happy about anything else, be happy that I'm finishing the message. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad. I'm glad about the church. I'm glad you're here as a part of the church. So be happy about your church. Secondly, stay in unity with each other and with God's vision for his, his vision for the church. You understand what I mean by that? Glory to God. Find your place. Find God's place for you in that and take it. Take it. If that means going to Platteville, then talk to Pastor Mike and Amanda. Sunday night, next Sunday night, the 21st, we will have a meeting in Platteville to share with anybody that's interested what we're doing, who's doing it. You know, if we have leaders in places, we'll be introducing those. And so uh, what we'd like to do last Sunday night, we had a meeting where we announced all this. We recorded it. If you would like to see the, the video of that meeting, then today in, on your connection card, as you put it in the offering, right on the back of it, you know, send me the link so I can see that video. Send me the link. And make sure you give us your email in English. Okay, nobody writing in tongues. Okay, so uh, we want to be able to, to see that. Hallelujah. So number one, number one, stay happy about your church. Because part of the enemy's ploy will, will be to get you thinking about uh, with other thoughts. Can, can you understand that? Amen. So stay happy about your church. Thirdly, walk, secondly, walk in love and find your... And, Walk in unity with each other and with God's picture for the church. And number three, say the same thing. Speak the same thing. Be, be in that place of unity with each other. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in this church. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here, and Pastor Mike, come on up while we're praying. If, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you say, Pastor, I believe what I've heard about Jesus. I believe that he died for our sins. I believe he's the son of God like the Bible says. I believe he's been raised from the dead and God's made him Lord, but I don't know that I've ever welcomed him into my life as my Savior. I don't know that I've ever turned my life over to him and become a child of God, but I want to do that today. I want to receive Jesus. You might not, you don't know everything about it, but you know in your heart you're ready and you want to receive Jesus. I want to pray with you before we go any further. If that's you, we're all going to pray together, but I want to know I'm praying with you. And so show me that, would you please, by lifting your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Now, you're raising your hand saying, I'm receiving Jesus as my Savior. I know a message like this is, is greatly for the church but I don't want to leave people out. Let's say it together. Father in heaven, thank you for making me one of your own. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In your name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time as Mike comes to finish up the service. Let's lift our voices and thank God for a good church. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, and thank you for joining us this week. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I'd like you to prayerfully consider partnering with us financially so we can get the Word of God to more and more people. We really do pray that this ministry has been a blessing to you. And if you're in this area, next Sunday at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, come on out and join us. If you're not here in the area, then please join us again online next Sunday. Thank you again and God bless you.